This is DeMarco Farr, 101 ESPN, sitting down with Rams general manager, Les Needs. We were talking about life, you and I, and about staying in shape and um, how this life, I guess, could be a grind on certain people. It just wears on you. Uh, coaches, when they take the job day one versus when they leave, they look drastically different, kind of like a president. Um, stand in shape the same way. Has your life become easier now since you're sitting on two picks in the first round? Does that change your, your prep at all for the draft? You know, I don't, I don't know if it makes it easier. Uh, you focus on the draft. I think I always like to have some, let's call it large goals or large mantras or things that I consider most important. Mm -hmm. And when we got the two picks for this first round draft, I knew that starting with this year's draft process, hey, getting those two picks correct plus the two picks in 14 correct were gonna be some of the more important decisions this franchise will have made over the last you know, few years. So did it make it easier? Yes, because you know what, it's a great opportunity. But did it make it harder? Yes, because hey, let's, let's focus in and get those right. I just, I just wonder, it's like putting money in the bank. The first time you actually saved money, like for the future, Part of your anxiety goes away just a little bit, depending on how much you put in, right? Um, if you have not enough, Demarco. Not but enough. the first, the premium picks, the the good players of college football, you have two choices, two chances at it. Does that make you relax? Does that make you eager? You know, how does that does that pull you off your center at all? No, you know, it's I like your word eager. So you certainly don't relax. You never really relax in this business, uh, but you're definitely eager. A couple of things, and when we made the trade always wanted some type of pick last year, but really wanted from the very beginning, hey, we're gonna get two first round picks here and want them in, in this year's draft 13 and 14. Not necessarily two picks in the first round last year. You see what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. it was, hey, we're all new, we're building, so I'd rather have some opportunities in the future. So I think that it's kind of one of the reasons we did that. When you talk about um, most important picks, um, there's a buzz about the Rams in St. Louis that hasn't been around for a while. Can you feel it from your office? Can you feel what's happening around here? What's going on? Uh, yeah, the answer, I'll be honest, is yes. And I think, uh, I think it's, it's more, the, here's what's great about the, the feeling. You, could, you always want, when you are in a football or in sports, to feel momentum. So. Unfortunately, this, this place had been, what, <laughs> the worst team in football mm -hmm. for the past five years. And this year we got the 16th pick in the draft. So we moved the needle, if you call it 16 spots, okay? Yeah. It, you know, you went from 32 to 16. So you feel that the nice thing is now you feel the hunger of, okay, we like to be one of those 12 that were playing last weekend and, and this weekend. And that's, that's what you like. You know what, you can feel the momentum. There was a game, we were 32, now we're 16. Yeah. But let's, 12 is where you really wanna See, be. See, that's what scares me, because if you're part of the 12, then I probably won't get this interview at this time. See what I mean? But we're we could do it, we could do it. Talk yeah, we could do it. <laughs> we could do, we it, could do it that week between the conference championship game and the big game. You're on, you're on, you're on. Um, you're. 2012 draft class led by Brockers, uh, the guy's a monster. Um, remember the, if you read the comments or heard the comments when he was drafted, oh my God, I can't believe they went with a D tackle and it was more of a trust me situation. Did it pan out exactly what you thought when you saw him at LSU, the way he's playing now, the way he finished the season? Uh, you know what, yes, and one of the reasons, one of the reasons was, hey, at that point in time, San Francisco 49ers, and they're one of the, what, two of the top four teams in the NFC, could run the football. Yeah, yeah. We got to dethrone them to get where we want to get. And their offensive line is big there. So, you know what? Brockers was going to bring that side. We need to go stop the run, stop what they do best, then make them throw the ball. So, that worked out. Anytime you take a kid from LSU who's 20 years old, uh, you you got to be willing to let him develop what you knew about Michael is of all the people on the planet. You've gotten to know him. Very mature human being yeah. for that age. I don't think I was that mature at that age. So that I think that helped him get to where he is now. I guess that sets the bar for the rest of the draft picks and whatever. The one thing I did notice about Michael Brockers is on the plane, he's got to turn sideways to make it down the aisle. That's 
That's that's that's a D tackle I like. Well, remember he's a he's a true he was a redshirt sophomore. Yeah. I went to see LSU play Mississippi State on a Thursday night, probably week two of the college season. Michael Brockers wasn't on the radar. There's a lot of players on LSU's team who was, but when you walked out to see those guys warm up, <laughs> you noticed him, and you go to the the, the flip chart or media guy and go. Oh, who is this guy? Okay, so that, I mean, size and length is, is he's, God, mom and dad gave him that.